Chapter 1 The Emergence of the Sumerians As the sun set, the land of Mesopotamia was enveloped in darkness. However, there was one ray of light. It was the light of Ur, a city-state built by the Sumerians. Located on a fertile plain between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, Ur was surrounded by high walls and moats. Within the walls were gleaming white temples, palaces, squares, markets, houses, and workshops. Ur was the center of Sumerian civilization, and flourished in trade, art, and learning. The king of Ur was called Shulga. He ascended the throne at a young age, and was believed to have received his kingship from the Sumerian gods. He called himself, King of All Nations, and sought to conquer the surrounding city-states and bring them under his rule. He also built a library of clay tablets written in cuneiform, to record the origins and history of the Sumerians. He exaggerated and wrote down his achievements, and myths to pass them on to future generations. The Sumerians were the first civilization to invent culture and science including writing, mathematics, and astronomy. They developed a writing system called cuneiform, which they wrote on clay tablets. Cuneiform was applied not only to Sumerian but also to other languages, and it influenced the history and culture of the ancient Orient. The Sumerians also developed technologies such as bronze and the wheel. They became rich through agriculture and trade and created political organizations called city-states. City-states were centered around temples and palaces, and were ruled by kings and priests. City-states competed and cooperated with each other, and flourished in Mesopotamia. The Sumerians were also a religious people. They were polytheistic and believed in gods, who controlled natural phenomena and human destiny. They made offerings and prayers to their gods and created myths and epics. The Sumerian religion influenced later cultures, such as the Babylonian and Assyrian. Where did the Sumerians come from? How did they build their civilization? What did they believe and fear? This history follows the rise and fall of the Mesopotamian civilization, considered the first civilization. Chapter 2 The Akkadian Invasion Although the Sumerians established a civilization in Mesopotamia, there were other peoples with different languages and cultures. One of these peoples was the Akkadians, a Semitic-speaking people. The Akkadians maintained their uniqueness while interacting with the Sumerians. Around the 24th century B. C. Sargon, king of the Akkadians, appeared. Using iron weapons, Sargon conquered Sumerian city-states, one by one and established the Akkadian Empire throughout Mesopotamia. Sargon sought to strengthen his own authority, while respecting the culture and institutions of the Sumerians. The Sumerians resisted the Akkadian invasion, but they were no match. They fought to defend their gods and civilization, but were defeated and taken into slavery or captivity. They were thought to have been destroyed by the Akkadians, but this was not the case. How did the Sumerians deal with Akkadian rule? How did they maintain their identity? How did they seize the opportunity to rise again? Sargon was an Akkadian king who left his mark on history. He appeared in Mesopotamia around the 24th century BC and conquered a number of Sumerian city-states. He founded the Akkadian Empire, which is considered the first empire in the world. Sargon said little about his origins or background. He tried to establish his authority by claiming to be God's chosen king. He tried to promote his own language. Akkadian, while respecting the culture and institutions of the Sumerians. Sargon expanded his version by conquering not only Mesopotamia, but also surrounding states such as Elam and Guti. He sent his sons and daughters to different places to rule the empire. He left many buildings and inscriptions to remember his name forever. Sargon was one of the most important kings in the history of ancient oriental politics. But his empire did not last long. 
After his death, the empire collapsed due to civil strife and rebellion. The Sumerians had a chance to free themselves from Akkadian rule. Chapter 3 The Rise and Fall of the Earth Third Dynasty After the collapse of the Akkadian Empire, the Sumerians regained power and founded the Earth Third Dynasty. The Earth Third Dynasty was founded at the end of the 22nd century BC by the independent Ur-Namu, the military commander of Ur. He freed the Sumerians from the oppressive rule of the Guti and ruled most of Mesopotamia. Ur-Namu tried to revive the culture and beliefs of the Sumerians. He built a huge ziggurat-stepped temple at Ur, which he dedicated to the moon god Nana. He introduced his own code of laws and established social and economic order. Ul-Nam was succeeded by his son, Sholga. Sholga ruled as an even more powerful king than his father, and reformed the empire into a highly centralized bureaucratic state. He promoted his own deification and left many temples and inscriptions. The Third Dynasty of Ur lasted about 100 years and was ruled by five kings. In the 21st century BC, however, the empire faced internal and external crises. Frequent invasions and rebellions by neighboring peoples, such as the Elamites and Amorites, weakened the empire's control. Ebi-Sin, the last king, was unable to defend the empire. He was defeated and captured by the combined forces of the Elamites and Amorites, and Ur was sacked. Thus the third dynasty of Ur fell and Sumerian civilization declined. Ur-Namu, as military commander of the Uruk king, Utu Hagar, conquered Sumerian cities and established a unified dynasty. He proclaimed himself king of Sumer and made Ur his capital. As a king in the service of the gods, he built temples and canals. He also established the oldest code called the Code of Ur-Namu, to uphold Sumerian law and justice. The Code of Ur-Nam was written in Sumerian on clay tablets. It contained provisions for crime and punishment, property rights, contracts, and family relations. For example, if a man commits adultery with another man's wife, he shall be thrown into the river, if a man steals another man's slave, he shall pay thirty times the value of the slave. And, if a man destroys another man's field, he shall pay ten times the yield of that field. The Ul Namu Code is believed to have influenced the later code of Hammurabi. To honor his achievements, Ul Namu built huge step pyramid temples in the cities of Ur and Uruk. These temples were called ziggurats, where offerings and rituals to the gods were performed. The ziggurat became a symbol of Sumerian civilization, and influenced many later generations. Ul-Namu died around 2095 BC. After his death, his son Sholga succeeded him on the throne. Sholga continued his father's legacy and developed the third dynasty of Ur. However, Sumer continued to be plagued by foreign enemies and civil war. Eventually, the Third Dynasty of Ur fell and Sumerian civilization declined. After the death of Ur-Namu, the Ur Third Dynasty was succeeded by his son Sholga, his grandson Amar-Sin, and others. They continued the policies of Ur-Namu, and worked for the unification and development of Sumer. However, the Ur Third Dynasty was plagued by foreign enemies and civil wars. The Elamites frequently invaded from the east, and threatened the territory of the Ur Third Dynasty. The Elamites sought the wealth and culture of Sumer, and sacked cities such as Ur and Uruk. From the west, the Amorites invaded and built a city called Babylon. The Amorites were a Semitic people, and had a different language and culture from the Sumerians. They expanded their own power while interacting and mixing with the Sumerians. Around 2004 BC, the Elamite king Kindatu led a large army against Ur. Ibi-Sin, the last king of the third dynasty of Ur, was defeated and captured by the Elamites and taken far to the east. 
This was the end of the Third Dynasty of Ur. The Sumerians were to disappear from the stage of history. However, the Sumerian civilization did not disappear completely. The Sumerian language continued to be studied as a form of culture, and Sumerian mythology and literature were passed down to future generations. Legacies such as the Ziggurat and the Code of Laws also remained, influencing later civilizations such as the Babylonians and Assyrians. The Sumerian civilization became the foundation of the ancient Orient, and its light will continue to shine forever. Chapter 4 Foundation of the First Babylonian Dynasty After the fall of the Third Dynasty of Ur, Mesopotamia again entered a period of division and turmoil. The Sumerian culture declined, and Semitic peoples rose to prominence. Among them, the Amorites, who lived to the west, expanded their power. They built the city of Babylon and founded the first Babylonian dynasty. The most famous king of the first Babylonian dynasty was Hammurabi. He ascended the throne in 1792 BC, when Babylon was still a small kingdom. It was surrounded by powerful states such as Isin and Larsa. While Shamsi Adad I of Assyria held sway in the north, Hammurabi confronted these opponents with skillful diplomacy and strategy, gradually expanding his power in Babylon. In 1763 BC, Hammurabi defeated Lim Sin, I of Larsa and conquered southern Mesopotamia. In 1755 BC, Hammurabi conquered the city-states of Eshnunna and Mari, uniting eastern and western Mesopotamia. In 1750 BCE, Hammurabi won a victory against Assyria and brought northern Mesopotamia under his control. Thus, Hammurabi succeeded in uniting all of Mesopotamia for the first time in about 250 years since the Ur Third Dynasty. Hammurabi not only waged war, but also worked to establish peace and order. He called his reign the Age of Justice, and tried to administer justice and the laws given by the gods to the people. His greatest achievement was the compilation of the Code of Hammurabi. This is the oldest codified law in the ancient Orient, and contains detailed regulations consisting of 282 articles. The code is based on the retributive principle of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, with different punishments based on status and gender. At the same time, however, there are provisions to protect the poor and vulnerable, and the intent to correct social inequalities and injustices can be seen. Hammurabi also implemented large-scale canal digging and irrigation projects. This led to the development of agricultural production, and trade in Mesopotamia and economic prosperity. Culture and art also flourished, and while it inherited the legacy of the Sumerian civilization, it developed in its own unique way. Hammurabi left his mark on history, as the pioneer of the ancient Babylonian kingdom, as a gift from the gods. Hammurabi erected his own code of laws as stone monuments throughout Mesopotamia. The most famous of these is the one placed in the Temple of Marduk in Babylon. This monument was about 2.25 meters high, and weighed about 4 tons, and was inscribed with the entire text of the code in cuneiform. At the top of the monument was a relief of the sun god Shamash, the god of justice, sitting on his throne and giving authority and law to Hammurabi. The monument was later moved to Susa, where it was discovered in 1901. It is now on display in the Louvre Museum in Paris. Hammurabi devoted himself not only to the code, but also to building projects such as temples and palaces. He beautifully decorated Babylon as his own capital. In particular, the Temple of Marduk was a magnificent structure, with a 90-meter ziggurat stepped tower at its center. This ziggurat is known as the Tower of Babylon and is mentioned in the Bible and by the ancient Greek historian Herodotus, among others. Hammurabi also paid homage to the gods of other cities, 
and restored or rebuilt temples in many of them. He called himself, King of the Four Quarters, and worked for religious unity throughout Mesopotamia. Hammurabi ruled Mesopotamia for about 42 years, from 1750 to 1749 BC. He is regarded not only as the greatest lawmaker of the ancient Orient, but also as a cultural and economic developer. After his death, the first Babylonian dynasty began to decline, but the old Babylonian kingdom he established had a profound influence on later generations. Chapter 5 The Hittites and the Kassites After the death of Hammurabi, the first dynasty of Babylon was weakened by internal strife and foreign invasions. Around 1595 b. C. The Hittites from Asia Minor attacked Babylon. They defeated the Babylonian army with iron weapons and chariots, and sacked the city. The Hittites destroyed Babylon, but left soon after. They had no interest in establishing permanent rule in Mesopotamia. After Babylon was destroyed, a people called the Kassites entered Mesopotamia. They had been living on the Iranian plateau and in the Zagros Mountains since about 2000 B.C., and they took advantage of the turmoil in Babylon to move south. The Kassites rebuilt Babylon and established the Third Dynasty of Babylon in 1531 B.C. They respected the Code of Hammurabi and adopted Akkadian and Sumerian as their official languages. Their own language, Kassite, is virtually undocumented. The Kassites ruled Mesopotamia for about 400 years, during which time they were in constant conflict with other powers. In particular, they often clashed with the northern kingdom of Mitanni. The Mitanni kingdom was founded by the Feruli, an Indo-European-speaking people, and had a vast territory from Asia Minor to Syria from about 1500 BC to 1300 BC. The Mitanni Kingdom also formed alliances and treaties with the New Kingdom of Egypt and the Hittite Empire, but was eventually destroyed by both. The Kassites were also destroyed by an Elamite invasion around 1155 BC. The Elamites were an ancient civilization on the Iranian plateau, and had a long history with Mesopotamia. The Elamites destroyed Babylon and looted many of its cultural artifacts. This event is called the Second Destruction of Babylon. Thus ended the era of the ancient Babylonian kingdom. After the Hittites left, Babylon remained in ruins. Eventually, however, the Kassites from the Iranian plateau came to Babylon's attention. They had begun to invade Mesopotamia around 2000 B. C, and they did not overlook the fact that the Hittite attacks had weakened Babylon's resistance. The Kassites expanded their power under a king named Agam II, who reigned from 1602 BC to 1585 BC. He defeated the Hittites and ruled all of Babylonia, beginning the Second Babylonian Dynasty. He restored the Code of Hammurabi and worked to rebuild Babylon. He also established diplomatic relations with Egypt and Mitanni to maintain peace and stability. The Kassite dynasty lasted about 400 years, during which time they faced many difficulties. There were constant wars and civil strife with the northern kingdom of Mitanni and the southern kingdom of Elam. However, the Kassites endured them and inherited and developed the Babylonian civilization. They contributed to science and technology, including astronomy and mathematics, as well as to artistic culture. Their own language, Kassite, is little known, but their names are etched in history. Chapter 6 The Rise of the Assyrian Empire The Assyrians, a Semitic people who lived in northern Mesopotamia, became a powerful military force between the 9th and 7th centuries. BC and began to invade the surrounding areas. They conquered countries such as Babylonia, Egypt, Israel, and Judah using new weapons and tactics such as iron tools, chariots, and cavalry. They also forcibly relocated the inhabitants of enemy lands to prevent uprisings. 
and infiltrate their own culture. The invasion of the Assyrians is also recorded in the Bible. In 740 B.C., they took Samaria, the capital of the Kingdom of Israel, and held its inhabitants captive eight years later. They invaded the Kingdom of Judah, but failed to take Jerusalem. The Assyrians continued to expand their power in Mesopotamia and along the Mediterranean coast. But internal turmoil and opposition from external enemies caused their gradual decline. In 612 B.C., the capital of Nineveh was destroyed by a coalition of Babylonians and Medes, and the Assyrian Empire fell. The Assyrians conquered Egypt, Phoenicia, and other countries, bringing the entire Middle East under their control. It reached its peak in the 7th century. B.C. under the kings Asarhaddon and Ashurbanipal. King Asarhaddon sacked the Phoenician city of Sidon, which was allied with the rulers of Nubia and Cush in Egypt. He also captured King Manasseh of Judah and imprisoned him in Babylon. King Ashurbanipal destroyed Thebes in Egypt and subjugated Tursu and Sidon in Phoenicia. They also took an interest in culture and learning and built a huge library in Nineveh. It contained thousands of clay tablets that recorded the knowledge and history of the ancient civilizations of Mesopotamia. Chapter 7 The Fall of the Assyrian Empire The Assyrian Empire was weakened by civil strife and rebellion. At the end of the 7th century BC, it was attacked by the allied armies of the Kingdom of New Babylonia and the Kingdom of Media. In 612 B.C., the capital of Nineveh fell, and the descendants of King Ashurbanipal established a government in exile in Haran. However, this regime collapsed in 609 B.C., and the Assyrian Empire fell. Its former glory was buried in the clay tablets left in the library of Nineveh. Nineveh was the capital of the Assyrian Empire and the largest city in the Orient. Its walls were 20 meters high and 15 meters thick, with a circumference of about 13 kilometers. Inside were royal palaces, temples, gardens and libraries. It housed thousands of clay tablets inscribed with Assyrian history and culture. But in the summer of 612 B. C., its glory came to an end. After a fierce three-month siege, the Allied forces finally breached the walls of Nineveh. The people of Nineveh were killed by swords, arrows, and fire. The royal palace and temple were set ablaze, and the library burned to the ground. Nineveh was reduced to ashes and smoke. The capital of the Assyrian Empire was destroyed overnight. Chapter 8 The Glory of the New Babylonian Kingdom After the destruction of the Assyrian Empire, the Kingdom of New Babylonia assumed hegemony over Mesopotamia. Its capital, Babylon, prospered as the largest city in the Orient. There, astronomy, mathematics, medicine, and other sciences developed and were recorded on clay tablets. Architecture and art also flourished. Its masterpiece is the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, one of the seven wonders of the world. Legend has it that it was built by the king, because the queen missed the mountains of her homeland. The garden was built on a terrace, 25 meters high and was supplied with water by canals and pumps. Colorful flowers and trees were planted there. The Hanging Gardens of Babylon symbolized the glory of the new Babylonian kingdom. It was Nebuchadnezzar II, who established the new Babylonian kingdom at its height. He succeeded his father, Nabopolassar, as king, and expanded his territory with expeditions to Egypt, Syria, and Palestine. He also devoted himself to the construction of the city of Babylon. The most famous of his structures is the Ishtar Gate. It is a huge gate made of blue bricks at the northern entrance of Babylon. The gate was decorated with reliefs of bulls, lions, and other animals symbolizing the goddess Ishtar. The Ishtar Gate was a symbol of the grandeur and majesty of Babylon. Chapter 9 Invasion of the Persian Empire 
Mesopotamia was a fertile land between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Ancient civilizations flourished here, but were subsequently ruled by various states and peoples. In the 6th century BC, Achaemenid Persia rose to prominence. The Persians, who lived on the Iranian plateau bordering Mesopotamia, were subordinate to the Elamites and Assyrians. However, Cyrus II became king, conquered the Elamites and Medians, and became independent. Cyrus II continued to expand westward, destroying the Lydian and Babylonian kingdoms. He respected the culture and religion of Mesopotamia and freed the captive Jews. He became known as the King of the World. After Cyrus II pacified the nations of the East, he turned his attention to the new Babylonian kingdom, which was the greatest power in the West. The new Babylonian kingdom had inherited the territory of the former Assyrian Empire and ruled Mesopotamia. However, its king, Nabonidus, was cold to the traditional god Marduk and worshipped the moon god Sin. Dissatisfied, the Babylonians pinned their hopes on Cyrus II. In 539 BC, Cyrus II defeated the new Babylonian army at the Battle of Opus and invaded Mesopotamia. Nabonidus, who had been celebrating in his own city of Ur, hurried back to Babylon. But it was too late. Cyrus II, with ingenious trickery, broke through the walls of Babylon and entered the city bloodlessly on October 29. He proclaimed himself, King of Kings, and made Mesopotamia part of the Persian Empire. Cyrus II respected the culture and religion of Babylon, and worshipped at the Temple of Marduk. He issued a decree called the Edict of Cyrus, which freed the Jews and other peoples who had been forcibly relocated by Babylon. He allowed them to return to their homeland and serve their gods. He became known as the first humane conqueror in history. Chapter 10 The End of Mesopotamian Civilization After the death of Cyrus II, the Persian Empire was expanded by kings such as Darius I and Xerxes I. However, between the 5th and 4th centuries B.C., the Persian Empire began to decline due to attacks by the Greeks, Macedonians, and others. In 334 BC, Alexander III the Great launched the Persian expedition at the request of his father Philip II. He defeated the Persian army at the battles of the Granicos River, Issos, and Gagamela, and in 330 BC, he captured Persepolis, the capital of the Persian Empire. He defeated the Persian king Darius III. But Darius III was killed by his own men. Alexander III made the territory of the Persian Empire his own. But he continued to expand eastward. He reached the Indus River, but was turned back by a revolt of his soldiers. He died of a fever in Babylon in 323 BC. Since he had no successor, his empire was divided by his generals. This was the Diadochoe War. Mesopotamia was also involved in this turmoil. Babylon was ruled by one of his generals, Seleucus. Inicator, after the death of Alexander III, he ruled over a vast territory, including Mesopotamia, which he called the Seleucid Dynasty. However, the Seleucid Dynasty was weakened by internal divisions and the invasion of foreign enemies. In 141 B.C., Mesopotamia was conquered by the Parthians, a nomadic people of Iranian origin. The Parthians made Mesopotamia part of their own kingdom, and destroyed many cities, including Babylon. The Parthian kingdom also had to contend with powerful enemies, such as the Roman Empire and Sassanid Persia. From 116 to 217 B. C. The Parthian Kingdom and the Roman Empire clashed several times, and Mesopotamia became the battleground. In 226 AD, the Parthian Kingdom was destroyed by Sassanid Persia. Sassanid Persia brought Mesopotamia back under the influence of Persian culture.
Thus, Mesopotamian civilization ended up under foreign rule. However, the people of Mesopotamia did not completely abandon their own culture and beliefs. While they accepted the influence of the Persians, Greeks, and Romans, they retained the traditions they had inherited from their Sumerian, Babylonian, Assyrian, and other ancestors. They developed their own languages and scripts, arts and sciences, laws and myths. They were proud and confident as descendants of the world's oldest civilization. But the people of Mesopotamia were about to undergo a major change when they encountered a new religion. Between the 6th century B. C. and the 5th century B. C. Judaism was introduced to Mesopotamia. Judaism was a monotheistic religion, as opposed to the polytheism of Mesopotamia. However, Judaism had much in common with Mesopotamian mythology and history, and influenced the Mesopotamian people. Christianity was also introduced to Mesopotamia. Between the 1st century BCE and the 1st century CE, Christianity was a monotheistic religion derived from Judaism, which also conflicted with Mesopotamian polytheism. However, Christianity also had a close relationship with Mesopotamian culture and thought, and was accepted by the Mesopotamian people. These religions changed the beliefs and values of the Mesopotamian people. Many people abandoned their own gods and converted to monotheism. Some, however, could not forget their gods. They continued to worship their gods in secret. They believed that one day, their gods would return and lead Mesopotamia back to glory. This is the story of one of these men. His name was Ashurbanipal. He was a descendant of the last king of the Assyrian Empire that once ruled Mesopotamia. He grew up hearing from his father about the history and culture of Assyria and the legends of its gods and heroes. He himself learned the Assyrian script and deciphered the ancient knowledge written on many clay tablets. He believed that he himself should have been born king of Assyria. This story is about such a man. His name was Ashurbanipal. He was a descendant of the last king of the Assyrian Empire that once ruled Mesopotamia. He grew up hearing from his father about the history and culture of Assyria and the legends of its gods and heroes. He himself learned the Assyrian script and deciphered the ancient knowledge written on many clay tablets. He believed that he should have been born king of Assyria. However, he was born at a time when the Assyrian Empire had long since fallen and Mesopotamia was ruled by the Parthians. He was treated as a slave by the Parthians and forced to work on their farms. He hid his origin and behaved like any other slave. But in his heart he was always rebellious. He remembered the glory of his ancestors and prayed to his own gods. He dreamed that one day he would be free to liberate Mesopotamia. One day he had a miraculous encounter. Fleeing from his farm, he met an old man in the mountains. The old man called himself Zoroaster and said he was a Persian sage. He showed interest in Ashurbanipal and spoke with him. He began to teach Ashurbanipal the monotheistic religion of Zoroastrianism. Zoroastrianism had a dualistic worldview of good and evil and preached an eternal struggle between the good god Ahura, Mazda and the evil god Anla Manju. Zarathustra told Ashurbanipal that he was the chosen one of the good god, and that he had a mission to rid Mesopotamia of the evil god. At first, Ashurbanipal was skeptical of Zarathustra's words. He questioned the relationship between the gods he believed in and the Zoroastrian gods. Zarathustra replied that all the gods he believed in were incarnations of the good god and had the power to oppose the evil god. Ashurbanipal was gradually moved by Zoroaster's words. He came to accept the teachings of Zoroastrianism and to realize his mission. He trained with Zoroaster in the mountains learning the arts of combat and magic.
With the blessings of his own gods and good deities, he became a powerful force to be reckoned with. Finally, he decided he was ready and left Zarathustra for Mesopotamia. He freed the slaves who were suffering under Parthian rule, and made them his own people. He told the slaves about his origins and his mission, and asked for their cooperation. He fought against the Parthians in different parts of Mesopotamia, and won victory after victory. He came to be revered as a savior by the people of Mesopotamia. However, his successes soon reached the ears of the Parthian kingdom. The Parthian king, Arsaces, saw Ashurbanipal as a dangerous rebel, and sent a large army to defeat him. Ashurbanipal was forced to face the Parthian army. He put his faith in his own gods, and in the Lord and went out to fight a decisive battle. The battle between Ashurbanipal and the Parthian army was fierce and bitter. Ashurbanipal fought the Parthian army with his own strength, and with the help of his friends. He defeated many enemies and received many wounds. He fought to the end. But despite his efforts, the Parthian army was overwhelmingly superior in numbers. Ashurbanipal was gradually driven into a corner. He was filled with grief and rage as he watched his comrades fall one by one. He called upon his gods and the good Lord. He wished that he could complete his mission. But his prayers were not answered. He was defeated by the Parthian king Arsax. He died with his own hopes and dreams. Mesopotamia came completely under the control of the Parthian Empire. The Mesopotamian civilization ended its history. But the Mesopotamian civilization did not disappear. The knowledge, culture, art and religion established by the Mesopotamian civilization were passed on to other civilizations, Persians, Greeks, Romans, Muslims, and others, used and developed the heritage of the Mesopotamian civilization. Mesopotamian civilization became the foundation of Western and Eastern civilizations. Mesopotamian civilization was one of the oldest and greatest civilizations in history. The Mesopotamian civilization is deeply engraved in the history of mankind. The end. Thank you for watching to the end. Please subscribe to our channel and give us a high rating.